and I am making my own painting channel. I have been painting um, for a long time. <laughs> I've never made a channel for some reason though. I've always done Instagram, but I've always been, I don't know, I really wanna push myself uh, to just make art my full-time career. I want to be a painter full time, just trying to change my lifestyle, trying to keep this channel going so that I will consistently make art more and can grow as an artist. I want to take you guys with me on this journey and show you how I do so and I will create a plan. I will walk you through it, update you guys, and hopefully it all works out. <laughs> So you're going to obviously need some canvas and then you're going to need some stretcher bars, staples, a stapler, a hammer, and some scissors. The very first step is to remove your cat off of the canvas. It might do this itself, which is very nice. So you're going to unwrap and assemble your stretchers. Mine came in packs of two, sometimes they do come as single stretchers, so you're going to want to make sure that you're getting two of the same size for each parallel side of the canvas. Now you need to assemble your canvas. I do this on top of the fabric so that I don't scratch the floor or anything, just to be safe. Now once you have your sides all lined up, it's time to attach the corners together. With pre-made stretcher bars, they should just slide in. Sometimes they aren't cut completely correct, so be careful if you're trying to force it in. And when you put it in to the other edge, make sure that the wood is completely flush. So do this for every corner. And at the end, I like to just tap in the sides with a hammer just to really make sure that it's in as far as it can go and it won't slide anywhere. Now before you completely attach the stretcher together, you need to double check it with something that has a right angle. I have made canvases before that I think are perfectly square and they aren't and I completely finished my painting and realized when I walked away that it was askew. So this is a really important step even though it doesn't seem like it. To secure your stretchers, you need uh, just to staple them together. You don't need anything too intense. I usually just do two staples on each corner because when we stretch the canvas, it will have even more staples on the corner that will secure it more. And then I tap in the staples with a hammer just to make sure it's all flush. Now I am getting ready to cut the fabric. I check my edges and leave a little bit of an allowance uh, from the wood, maybe like four centimeters or something like that, just enough to grip. And then I just tear the canvas to the size that I want. I end up trimming down the fabric later, so it doesn't matter if there's a bunch of frayed edges at this point. Now you need to make sure your canvas is centered with the stretcher bar, and this is where we start stretching. So you start from the middle of each wooden bar and you're going to pull it fairly taut. You're going to want to be able to see a line like that right there in the middle. And then you're going to start seeing this V once you get to the third side. We just start off with one center staple on each side. And when you get to the end of the step, there should be sort of like a diamond shape in the fabric of it being stretched out. 
Don't pull it too tight though, or it will pull out staples on the opposite side. Now we just worked side to side from each staple moving to the corners and pulling the canvas tight. You should be able to, once you get close to the corners, flip your canvas around and kind of whack it like it's a drum. It should be tight enough to make kind of a drum sound. Some people use, um, they're like canvas pliers to stretch the canvas to make it really tight, but when I've used this a lot of the time, it does pull it too tight and it just doesn't work. It ruins the fabric for me. I think just using my hands is enough for this. So you keep working until you get to the corners. And the step is a little bit tiring on the hands and fingers, that's why I add a little bit of an allowance so I have something to grip when I'm pulling at the fabric. So now you can trim the excess off because you are done pulling at the fabric and trimming this off removes the frayed edges and gives it a nice clean professional look. It's easier to do this before you do the corners and the fabric is all folded up. And it also just makes folding the corners easier when there's less fabric. You don't have to do this, but I find that it just makes my paintings feel more finished when I do this instead of having a bunch of extra fabric on the back. Especially if you're not going to frame your canvas, this is a pretty important step. So now it's time to fold in the corners. This is one of the more difficult parts to get the hang of when making a canvas. So you're going to want to make kind of a diamond shape and fold it flat, kind of like origami, and make sure that one side is a line. Does, I don't know if this makes sense, how I'm pointing at it. You're going to want to do this. <laughs> um, and then fold it flat. It's harder to describe with words than it is to just try and show you with the camera. It's kind of like making a nurse's square when you're making your bed on the corners, if you've ever done that. Fold it in your corners in a bed. You see how now it's completely straight? So then you take your stapler and I do two or three again on the corners. And the corners will take some practice. Don't get too frustrated if it takes you a few retries.
So now we are on to gessoing the canvas, or you could call it priming too. I just have a giant bulk thing of gesso that's like student grade. So you're going to want some water. I use a watercolor brush because I like how the bristles don't leave as much of a mark on the canvas. When I use the watercolor brush, I don't have to sand down the priming afterwards. So you're going to want to do a few layers of thin gesso on your canvas. This might take a few hours to do if you want it to dry completely in between, depending on how smooth you want it to be and just how absorbent your canvas is. I've found different canvases absorb the gesso a lot more. Sometimes after the first coat, it looks like you didn't even put anything onto the canvas. Just get it on there. Don't forget to do the edges of the canvas as well. This is also an important step. I usually flip the canvas between each, um, each coat. I rotate it 90 degrees, and that helps me make sure that I get all the sides if I flip it before each time. Okay, so now I'm at a good stopping point and I'm just taking a break, making some tea, letting the canvas sit for a little bit. Don't be too impatient. You can go and check it. Um, oh, it's still wet, so I gotta wait some more. And once it's actually dry, do a few more coats, get all the edges, and you should have a primed canvas. Okay, you guys, that's gonna be the end of this video. I ended up finishing gessoing um, my canvas off screen, but in total it was about four, I think, yeah, four layers of gesso. It came out pretty smooth because I used a watercolor brush. Some people do like to sand it afterwards to get it completely smooth. I'm not that picky. Yeah. In the next video, I'm hoping to finish this actual painting. I'm just trying to make this quick one just to test out my channel. But I want to show you the techniques that I use and just uh, the ways I like to paint. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more from me, I'm going to have some links down below of my other art pages. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.